Thank you, uh, Senator Round. Senator Hirono, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I thank all of the panelists. Uh, clearly, there are many demands on our resources. That is an understatement. And I would consider a foundational concern to be the need to invest in our infrastructure, which is not only a matter of geopolitical competition, but also the readiness of the force, of forces. And as chair of the subcommittee on readiness, improving our military's readiness is a top priority. In the last year, let me give you some examples. There have been numerous issues with the military's infrastructure in Hawaii, from water main breaks to toxic chemical leaks and spills endangering our groundwater. And I know that these kinds of events are not uh, particular to Hawaii and across the country. We need to better maintain and modernize our uh, DOD infrastructure to take care of our people, get our systems out of maintenance on time, and be able to support national security. I'll start with Dr. Lin. It's, it, it is clear that Indo-PACOM AOR infrastructure needs to be modernized. Uh, can you elaborate on the importance of our infrastructure for our national security, especially in the Pacific? So our infrastructure in the Indo-Pacific, particularly the fact that we are now investing more in much more resilient and dispersed basing is absolutely critical, particularly as we look at the range of missiles, the hundreds. Uh, I think right now, if based on what DOD released last year, the range of mi the missiles that China has in its vicinity is clearly around 2,000 or so. The range of missiles that China can bring to bear means that in any fight, whether it's over Taiwan, we will need to be able to be able to disperse our assets so we're not relying on any particular base. And in order to be able to maintain that we can function from particular airfields, we need to harden our infrastructure. We also need to work with our allies and partners to make sure that we have the capabilities to quickly repair, for example, runways and other facilities. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely critical to the fight. Well, we basically, from what I can see, and especially with the examples of what's happening in Hawaii, we have aging infrastructure, which we tend to ignore until something breaks. And then you have Tripler Hospital, which is the main military hospital, not have water or not have electricity. We can't have that and maintain readiness. So I hope that the other two panelists agree that even as we need to pay attention to um, uh, other aspects of keeping our military ready, that uh, let's not forget that some of these foundational concerns. I want to get to, uh, again, uh, Do Dr. Lin, a key foundation of our national defense strategy is integrated deterrence, which highlights the need to work cooperatively with our allies, and a number of you have already emphasized how important it is to strengthen our allies and partners, uh, to strengthen our economic, cultural, and defense relationships. It's all of, of a piece, because we can't just focus on the mill-to-mill mil -mill relationships. And we can deter aggression in the Pacific, for example, with our uh, network of, of allies and partners, including increased posture forward and greater opportunities to conduct training in the region. Dr. Lim, between the recently announced access agreements with the Philippines, the U.S. basing the historic AUKUS, AUKUS agreement to share nuclear uh, propulsion information and work on a, emerging technologies and the current renegotiation of the compacts of freely associated states, the administration is taking large steps forward in strengthening our relationships in the important Indo-Pacific region. What kind of message do these steps send to both China and our regional partners? Thank you. So our efforts to strengthen relations, whether it's on the defense front or on the political front, it sends a message of reassurance to our allies and partners that are looking to us to help them, to help deter Chinese coercion and deter Chinese aggression. What I would know is uh, China is watching these efforts very, very closely. And while it does have a deterrent effort, it is also causing China to think, well, how do we counter this? And as China looks at this, what China is looking for is what they find as the weakest link among our allies and partners. Mm -hmm. And also, they probably have also have in their mind thinking, well, do we also need the same sort of partnerships and alliances? And that's where, again, returning back to the China-Russia relationship, as China is watching what we're doing with our allies and partners, it, it must be in Beijing's thinking, well, we need to definitely have our own partnerships. And Russia is definitely one of them that China needs to keep. So how important uh, is our relationship with, with the Pacific Island nations, uh, i.e. our uh, compact 
partners? Um, Absolutely, Senator, absolutely important because, as you know, China is trying to increase its military presence mm -hmm. there. And as China, as the PLA becomes more and more active, it is now venturing much more beyond the first island chain into the second island chain. So if we are able to deny China a military base in uh, within the second island chain area, that would allow the, the, the United States to continue to flow our forces into the region much more easily than if China, for example, had a military base on the Solomon Islands. It would also make it much easier for us to support some of our key allies there, including Australia. Uh, Dr. Hill, uh, Mr. Zakam, do you agree that we can do a lot more with our uh, island nation partners? i.e. Marshall Islands, uh, the uh, Micronesia, Palau, and other island nations. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.